please join me in a pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I move to approve the agenda. Second. Is there any amendment? M Madam Chairman, uh, for, for purposes of uh, informing the public, those who are not here for the awards, that are here for the redistricting, I would propose that we add a discussion of the options that will be considered at the next meeting prior to the public comment period. But I think we should limit ourselves to a sp set amount of time. I mean, we just spent two hours. But I think there are a number of the people that are here to comment, and if they know exactly what's under consideration or what will be under consideration for next week, assuming we can come to agreement on that, which I think we were very close, it's just the time, you know, got away from us, um, I think that would be very helpful. I mean, it, if we could, I don't know, what do you all think, 15 minutes? Would are, that be? Would, would, are we saying that we would suspend um, this meeting t for the school board to go over in work session, see the um, options that were brought, and hopefully then come back over to um, announce those well, results? Could we not just discuss them here? I mean, we were, we were pretty close. I, would that give Mr. Horan is putting these together, right, what we discussed? I mean, we, we discussed them, but we didn't see them, you know, as, as a whole. I don't know since it's set up over there. I, the technology is not oh. where you want me to be. Yeah, um, nor am I. Perhaps, perhaps the board could amend the agenda to, to include that item. And while we are working on our recognizing folks, we'll double check on the uh, timing to get those uh, other options numbers together. Okay. Uh, and if for some reason we have a difficulty with uh, bringing the technolo technology over, we could suspend this meeting, go over, look at the options, come back and resume the meeting. Okay, and, and I'm, the reason I'm proposing this is as a courtesy to the people that are here to make comments so that before they make their comments, they'll know what we are going to consider for the next meeting, and they may amend their comments perhaps accordingly. All right, is there a second? Um, I'll second that I'm with Dr. Benson's. I'm kind of confused still. Right. What are we amending on this agenda? Well, we would be, we would be adding between awards and citizen comments, we would be adding, we would be suspending to continue our work session to develop options, which we would have to come back here and actually approve for the agenda for next week. I, I'm assuming that's something that we would have to do when we get down to information um, item 10.02. It's just that's going to be several hours from now. And if people come and they make comments, then those comments, you know, may not be the comments they would have made had they known what the options were. I mean, the intention was that we come up with these options at the work session that we just finished, and then they could have been announced. So, so I, what I understand is, at a minimum, we would have to uh, amend the agenda for 10:02 because I don't think we're prepared right now as we sit to discuss to review and approve school board colonial forge high school redistricting options unless uh, you come back quickly and we can populate that so I, I do agree that maybe if we could scope it left and right boundaries on what kind of what we came if there's time uh, but sometime like as dr. Benson mentioned I think that would be an appropriate way to go but what about bringing um, bringing the information items up to the top of the order for when we get back that would be the amendment as well yes um, i think we would suspend um pending completion of our work session and then items 10.01 i would say we should yes. do all information items 10.01 and 10.02 would move behind awards and become 5.01 and 5.02 does that is that i have no issue with that clear as mud <laughs> yeah. is that i have is that clear all right is there um any further discussion on that amendment of the agenda? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Now, we'll, we will start with uh, what we find the very exciting part of all of our meetings is the awards for um, 
our students. So I'm going to start uh, with Mr. Uh, Felix Adu, uh, Assistant Principal of Stafford High School for presentation of awards. I'll have him come forward. Yay. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> oh, I got to move down there. Oh, yeah. right. Of course. I do. I heard that. <laughs> sorry. Good evening, Madam Chair, school board members, Dr. Benson. Uh, will Sean McCosker please come up? Who's that? <laughs> Who got the picture? Okay, go ahead. Sean, a student at Stafford High School, was recently named as the finalist in the 2017 National Merit Scholarship Program. Oh <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not finished. We were and, allowed uh, to get Stay up there, Sean and has the opportunity to continue in the National Merit Scholarship Competition to earn scholarship prizes. Approximately 1.6 million juniors in more than 22,000 high schools entered the 2017 National Merit Scholarship Program by taking the 2015 preliminary SAT National Merit <laughs> Scholarship qualifying test. Sean is one of the 15,000 semi-finalists represent 1% of the students who took the test who re reached the level of finalist. Sean McCosker also was named one of more than 4,000 candidates in the 2017 U.S. Presidential Scholars Program. He was selected from nearly 3.3 million students expected to graduate from U.S. high schools in the year 2017. Inclusion in this program is one of the highest honors bestowed upon seniors. Scholars are selected on the basis of superior academic and artistic achievements, leadership qualities, strong character, and involvement in community and school activity. Congratulations, Sean. We're proud of you. <laughs> At this time, I would like to recognize the following recipients. Unfortunately, they would not they could not, be, uh, uh, could not attend due to the rescheduling of awards. Stafford High School is happy to recognize orchestra instructor, Mrs. Mandy Zayats, who arranged her concert orchestra to work on a musical composition, Agent Court, composed by Doug Spatz. What was unique about this was that Mr. Spatz conducted and instructed a concert orchestra via Skype for the entire block. This was creative way to use technology to bring a composer into the classroom to work with students. Uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Zayats, for uh, bringing this uh, knowledge and technology to our students. I would also like to recognize Stafford High School theater department performances of their one-act play. Orlando at the VHSL 5A State Theater Festival. This marks the fifth year in the past six years that the Stafford High School Theater program has advanced to the state championship level. Wow. Will you guys please come up? As, as you clap, I'll continue to boast about them a little bit. <laughs> Their presentation of Orlando marked the first time this, place was, this play was performed by a high school in the country. Following their performance, Stafford High School was awarded runner-up. The Stafford High School Theater uh, Department has cultivated a culture of hard work and passion for their arts, making them one of the most successful theater programs in the state. At the festival, Madeline Price received the outstanding Actor Award for her portrayal of Orlando, her seventh consecutive top acting honor. Raise your hand, Madeline. Yeah. Madeline. Congratulations. Uh, the cast included Orlando, of course, Madeline Price, the Queen, Andreas Jordan, Sasha, Savannah Ellis, Mama Duke, Caleb Johnson, 
the Arch uh, Duchess, Archduke, Hanley, Staley, Grimm's Ditch, Aaron Pugh. Production staff and crew inclu included director, Mr. Michael Diodario, co-director, Mr. Chad Johnson, <laughs> assistant director, Annie Fitzgerald, sound design, Logan Welch, stage manager, Sarah Puka, lightning, Emma Bathke, Kieran Broyan, Aaron Humphrey, S Stephen Schultz, prop crew, Delani Lee, Natalie Mel Melanoffi, Marvin Stearns, Lee Storm, costume crew, Diana Bloom, Cecilia Howell, Arcadia Khan, Young Hee Ho, Kaitlyn Rybach, Ali Yablonski. Stage crew, Benjamin Andrew, Nathan Borkowski, John Pates, Colin Robinson, Thomas Newson, Brittany Group. Excellent job, guys. Congratulations. If Mrs. Halk, um, principal of Brook Point High School, could start to make her way up here through the crowds. Thank you so much. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Brook Point, you guys go down. You can go down. You and Jamie. Good evening, Madam Chair, school board members, and Dr. Benson. I'm actually filling in for uh, Mrs. Howe tonight. She is off recruiting the best and the brightest to come to Stafford County. Um, so she's sorry she couldn't be here in time to make it back to recognize um, our students. But we're going to start off with Joseph Hendricks, if you can come forward. Joseph is the son of Kurt and Michelle Hendricks of Stafford. Um, he will be joining the freshman class at West Point Military Academy this fall. Joseph has been planning and dreaming of joining the academy since he was very young. He is pursuing the full IB diploma and has taken additional advanced placement courses, earning a current grade point average of 4.6. As a cadet senior petty officer, Joseph is an incredible asset to Brook Point's NJROTC program. Joseph's uniform is covered with ribbons earned, including Honor Cadet, Academic Team, and American Legion Scholastic Award. He wears these ribbons proudly and with modesty. Joseph is also an integral part of the school community with activities including Captain of the Varsity Lacrosse Team, Boy State Representative, National Honor Society Historian, Vice President of the Knitting Club, and National German Honor Society. Not only is Joseph extremely accomplished, he is such a kind young man, someone who is everybody's friend. We are so proud that Joseph is a Black Hawk and know that he will soar to do great things for our country. Congratulations, Joseph, and all of his loving, supporting family. The following students are recognized for their involvement in Brook Point's Virginia Star Program. Each Tuesday, these students gather after school to utilize their knowledge gained through courses to refurbish compu computers for donation to those in need. These students have restored and donated 50 computers to individuals and organizations in need during this school year alone. Benefits of this program include the table at St. George's, serve, Axe, McKinney Vento, Stafford Junction, and of course, Stafford County students at our own giveaway events. 
the technology that these students provide to others is an invaluable asset, and for that we are so thankful. These students are Shane Smith, Tristan Supples, Christina Hiller, Jared Knees, Colston Judd, Emma Devine, Avery Jow, and Blake Hassick. And we also have their um, advisor, Mr. Jeff Timmerman. Thank you. And our last group of students from Brookpoint High School. Um, these students are recognized for their individual efforts to improve the culture and climate of Brookpoint High School. Their collaboration with administration and teachers has been instrumental in many of the changes at Brookpoint this year and in years past. These students have attended national conferences, created new traditions, started clubs for student engagement and building connections to school. They each enthusiastically support the philosophy and expectations necessary to sustain our positive school culture through their daily interactions with peers and adults. Our building would not be the positive place it is today without these student leaders. And these students are Matthew Cooper, Brett Millison, we have Ireland Twiggs, Richie Keyspay, Lane Williams, and Jet Hayes. We also have Abby here again, who is at, uh, currently playing soccer, um, so she wasn't able to make it to the meeting tonight. So thank you guys. I'm going to ask Mr. Greg Daniel to start to make his way <laughs> through the through the crowds uh, for a presentation of awards. Good evening, Madam Chair, school board members, Dr. Benson. The Colonial Forge High School ACM student chapter, otherwise known as Colonial Forge High School Programming Club, sponsored two teams, CFHS Team Cyber 1, CFHS Team Cyber 2, and the Cyber Patriot 9 National Youth Cyber Defense Competition this year, the nation's premier national youth cyber education program. The competition puts teams of high school students in the position of a newly hired IT professional's task in managing the networks of a small company. In the competition, teams are given a set of virtual images that represent operating systems and are tasked with finding cybersecurity vulnerabilities and hardening the system while maintaining critical service. Teams compete for the top placement within their state and region and the top 10 teams compete nationally. At this time, I would like for the following team members to come down. Team Cyber One, who placed eighth in the state and qualified for regionals. Trevor, he Trevor Held, Adrian Spate, Paul Scheifelbein, and not in attendance, um, Ian Townsend and Joel Nobles. Team Cyber Two, who placed fourth in the states and third in the regionals, Ali Duvall, Ariel Duvall, Drake Foreman, and Jet Burdett, and also not in attendance, uh, Drake Wood. Would those individuals please come forward? And last but certainly not least, uh, she's already here. Um, uh, Ms. Sharon McPherson, who is the coach, teacher, and mentor, sponsor of these fine individuals, and Staff Sergeant Aaron Markwalder, who's also not here. Uh, this was the first year competing, and it was an amazing experience and a true example of cooperation. 
with support from Dino Robinson, Jay Cook, and Jeff Lovis of Central Office, the online virtual environment we needed was created. Staff Sergeant Aaron Markwalder, whose experience, knowledge, and time gave our students the keys to cybersecurity knowledge and hands-on training. Both teams qualified for states. At states, we placed fourth and eighth, respectively, thereby qualifying for regional competition. Placed in the Silver Tier Division, regionals was the farthest we could go this year. At regionals, both teams did well, and Cyber Team 2 placed third in a region that spanned approximately nine states. At this time, please join me in congratulating our Colonial Forge High School Cyber Patriot teams. In February 2016, Colonial, the Colonial Forge Yearbook staff was recognized as a pacemaker finalist for the National Scholastic Press Association. Pacemakers are considered to be the highest national honors in their field and unofficially known as the Pulitzer Prize of student journalism. Entries are judged by teams of professionals based on the following criteria, coverage and content, quality of writing and reporting, leadership, design, photography, and graphics. The award has been given annually since 1927 to recognize trendsetters and standard bearers. The final awards are announced at the NSPA JEA Spring Convention on April 9th. On Wednesday, March 15th, Ms. Tiffany Kopsack and the 2017 senior leadership staff traveled to New York to the Columbia Scholastic Press Association Spring Convention to receive a crown award for the 2016 book as well. Like the pacemaker, the crown is a national recognition in excellence in student journalism. It indicates strict adherence to journalistic guidelines while still encouraging students to push the boundaries of their creativity and storytelling movie. Neither of these recognitions would have been possible without the high standards and tireless dedication of the yearbook staff and the ongoing support of the teachers and students of Colonial Forge, who continually work to do great things and welcome the student journalists into their space. Receiving recognition today are the staff of the 2017 Forge Yearbook, who have been a part of the programs, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, since they were freshmen and basically are currently running the show. So at this time, will Catherine Rodriguez and business manager Jack Stafford and our teacher sponsor, Tiffany Kopsack, please come forward. <laughs> Madison Douglas is also part of this team, and she couldn't be with us tonight, but um, congratulations. Excellent job. Okay. At this time, can I have Natalie Berlou come forward? <clears throat> Natalie Berlou is a student at Colonial Forge who was recently named as a finalist in the 2017 National Merit Scholarship Program and has the opportunity to continue in the National Merit Scholarship Competition to earn scholarship prizes. Approximately 1.6 million juniors in more than 22,000 high schools entered into the, into the 2017 National Merit Scholarship Program by taking the 2015 Preliminary SAT National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test. Natalie is one of 15,000 semifinalists representing 1% of the students who took the test to reach the level of finalists. Please join me in giving Natalie a huge congratulations. <laughs> okay. 
And last but certainly not least, uh, please congratulate our Colonial Forge Virginia, Virginia DECA State Finalist Medalist. These seniors attended the Virginia State Leadership Conference that was held in Virginia Beach on March 3rd through March 5th. Each of these seniors were awarded the Virginia DECA State Finalist Medal on stage at the conference of approximately 3,700 DECA State competitors representing over 14,300 DECA members in Virginia. Please, at this time, will the following members please come forward? <laughs> uh, with, with us, uh, we have Chris Del, Del Castillo and uh, Kevin Wynn. Also a part of this team was Brianna Bowens and Ashley Overton, who was not with us. Congratulations, job, great job. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, Ms. Mr. Daniels, next time I hope you'll have your girls basketball team here. Absolutely. Yeah, they're still celebrating. <laughs> and wrestling. The uh, school board will recognize uh, Dr. Jim Stemple from Mountain View High School for presentation awards at this time. I brought an outstanding Wildcat with me, so I don't have to invite him up front. I'd like to introduce you. Um, Madam Chairman and school board members and Dr. Benson to Nicholas Chichok. Nicholas Chichok also was named a finalist for the 2017 National Merit Scholarship Program. He too joins 15, one of 15,000 semifinalists to representing 1% of the students who took the test to earn a finalist status. Uh, Nicholas is the second Mountain View student in three years to achieve this award, so we're very proud of that. Nicholas attends the Commonwealth Governor School and he's a three-year member of the robotics team. He attended Boys State. He uh, works and volunteers for Habitat of Humanity. Uh, his interests include guitaring, songwriting, and of course, robotics. Uh, we're very proud of him. He plans to major in mechanical engineering at Virginia Tech. <laughs> Dr. Benson, proud to say. Uh, and I'm also proud to say his mom and dad are here, but his mom works for Stafford County. She teaches autism at Mountain View High School, so we're proud of that as well. So congratulations, Nicholas. The next one I have is uh, school board recognizes Mr. Tom Nichols, Chief Academic Officer for Secondary Schools for a presentation of award. All right, we're gonna go with uh, somebody else. <laughs> just, uh, he just okay. waved me down here, so. Right. Did, did you, I'm Scott did McClellan, you Principal of North Stafford High School. <laughs> Good evening, Madam Chair, school board members, and Dr. Benson. Tonight, I would like to recognize three people who are fitting examples of why North Stafford High School is the world's greatest high school. My first recognition is of a North Stafford senior, Audrey Hamilton. Audrey couldn't be here tonight as she, is, as she has a soccer game. However, Audrey is being recognized this evening because she recently received an appointment to the United States Military Academy at West Point. Her willingness to serve our country is honorable. The intense process that it takes to be accepted into the United States Military Academy at West Point is testimony to Audrey's dedication and ambition that drives her to be Army strong. Audrey is, Audrey's North Nation family wishes her the best of luck and want her to know how proud we are for her commitment to our country. Next, could I have Mazen? <laughs> could I have Mazen Chalabi come down front? Earlier this year, Mazen received a $10,000 scholarship from the United States Senate Youth Program. He was one of two students in the entire state selected for this scholarship. The United States Senate Youth Program, established in 1962 by the U.S. Senate Resolution, is a unique educational experience for outstanding high school students interested in pursuing a career in public service. The 55th annual program took place in Washington, D.C. from March 4th to March 11th. Two student leaders from each state, the District of Columbia and the Department of Defense Education Activity, spent a week in Washington experiencing the national government in action. Student delegates heard major policy addresses by senators, cabinet members, officials from the departments of state and defense, and directors of other federal agencies. Additionally, Mazen participated in a meeting with a justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. 
Each delegate received an award of $10,000 towards a scholarship for undergraduate studies with the encouragement to pursue coursework in history and political science. This month, Mazen also received word that he was selected as a finalist in the UVA Jefferson Scholars Foundation program. The Jefferson Scholars program is one of the most prestigious programs a student can participate in. Mazen will represent the Piedmont area region, which is a competitive region that also includes Loudoun County. Only 120 students globally are selected to attend this, the finalist weekend. To get to this point, Mazen was nominated by the North Stafford High School Scholarship Committee. From there, he participated in two rounds of rigorous interviews with UVA alumni. On March 22nd through the 25th, Mazen will travel to UVA and participate in the finalist weekend, which will consist of interviews, mock government exercises, academic testing, and social events, while being evaluated by the selection committee. Ultimately, about 30 Jefferson scholars are selected at the end of the weekend. If selected as a scholar, Mazen will receive a full ride scholarship to UVA <laughs> and invited to participate in additional leadership and enrichment opportunities at UVA. Again, this is one of the most prestigious appointments a student can earn in this state of Virginia. Please join me in congratula congratulating Mazen for this amazing accomplishment. Could I have Deputy Apple come down? <laughs> and lastly, I would like to recognize North Stafford School Resource Officer Deputy Apple, as he took the leadership role in initiating, planning, and the execution of the first North Stafford High School mock trial. Due to Deputy Apple's vision and community involvement, he was able to encourage many prestigious volunteers to give their time to this endeavor. The mock trial consisted of three real-life cases that students can encounter during their teenage years. Deputy Apple's impact in North Stafford High School is immeasurable. This mock trial provided the real-life experiences for students that took learning out of the classroom and made this experience more valuable. Please join me in thanking Deputy Apple. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Nichols, you can come forward. <laughs> I apologize for the slip up. Uh, Dr. Stemple was running out the back and I needed to stop him. <laughs> Madam Chair, school board members, and Dr. Benson, it is my honor to be here tonight to recognize Mountain View High School Principal Dr. James Stemple. If you'd come forward. Dr. Stemple, is being recognized tonight for his recent accomplishment as being named the 2017 recipient of the Virginia High School League's Torch of Honor. This award is Virginia High School League's highest honor given to any administrator or actually any uh, person involved with activities in the state of Virginia. It is based on his outstanding service at the regional state level beyond the mandatory which is required in his role as an administrator and also for his service to other professional organizations, his innovation, developing new programs, expansion of existing programs, and other evidence of exceptional service to high school athletics and activities. Dr. Semple is now serving an unprecedented third term as the chairman of the Virginia High School League Executive Committee. Now the VHSL has been around for over 100 years. He has worked long and tireless hours for the league he served three terms as a member of the executive committee for a total of eight years, as well as serving at the district and the conference level and also the regional level, holding offices as chairman and vice chairman throughout that time. Dr. Semple is also a member of the National Association of Secondary School Principals and the Virginia High School Association of Secondary School Principals, and also the uh, ASCD, the Associates for Supervision and Curriculum Development. So it's my extreme honor to recognize Dr. Stemple on his distinguished recognition of the Virginia High School League Torch of Honor. Congratulations, sir.
It's always wonderful for us to recognize the great accomplishments of our, of our students. Uh, we have such talented students and staff and administration, and I know that is one of the joys of standing up here and um, celebrating those accomplishments with our students. So at this time, we are going to um, suspend the meeting to go, oh, no, I will ask Dr. Benson, where do we go? <laughs> what do you want us to do? Yeah, we're gonna need to go back over to the PDC because okay. we need both of those computers to show the models. Okay. And Chairman, can we try to set a time limit for us to be gone? Because yes. I know these people right. are here and they wanna to speak to us, but I, I do think it would be helpful for them to know, you know, what we are actually looking at for mm -hmm. um, decision next week, but. At the most a half hour, hopefully less. Including travel time. Including travel time. Everybody move. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I'm not even sure it'll take that long. Okay. If Mr. Horan has those options ready for us that we discussed. All right. Back by 810. Yeah. 810. Say. Sit back eight down ten. here at 810. Okay. All right. Or and, earlier. Uh, not to exceed. Super clerk. 810. Keep us on time. I'll be. All right, um, we, we, are, we are back from our uh, work session. We will move on to um, information items uh, 5.01 and 5.02. Um, I will just make a, a general statement uh, regarding 5.01 and then, uh, then we can move on. Uh, 5.01 was uh, brought by uh, Mr. Conley and myself regarding a sibling policy uh, to be considered by the, by the board going forward that would apply to the Colonial Forge redistricting effort that would go into effect next fall. Uh, there's several provisions in there. I believe out of the work session, we did have some comment regarding the extent of this, um, of the sibling policy. Uh, does anyone want to comment on that particular part? Uh, did you come up with any language? I, I, I can come up some language between now and next week, but the, um, the just as I understand it, the sibling policy would be that any student who is in Colonial Forge as of September of 2017 would be allowed to have a sibling attend Forge as long as that student is still in Ford. So when that student goes up to the, well, they started the 10th grade, I assume. So if they go to the 11th, the, the 10th grade, the 11th grade, and the 12th grade, as long as the student is in Forge, then their sibling who lives in the same household would be allowed to submit a, a uh, form to transfer into Forge. Is that correct? Is, is that um, is that our understanding? That was my understanding. And I appreciate um, you, Mrs. Hazard, and Mr. Conley with coming up with that because that is one of the recurring themes that we heard from the public about, you know, not splitting the families. Um, the, the document that has been submitted, there are some holes in it because it doesn't have certain dates. Um, there have been some, some suggestions by staff when this uh, item will come to the board in one week's time, it will have those uh, dates filled in. Um, again, it does not require somebody. It is an op option. This, this form would give to somebody the option to exercise that sibling policy if they so choose. It's and and okay. we, should, we should note that this would be transportation provided by the family. The school district would not be able to provide transportation. And I think if y'all knew how many buses we have and how many bus drivers we need, 20. you would understand that. <laughs> so, yes, Mr. Hammond. Some other, another edit. I just wanna make sure it's clear that um, <clears throat> that a student, it's a sibling of a student who is at CFS, uh, Colonial Forge, by way of residing in the Colonial Forge attendant zone which would be this year, the 16-17 school year. So essentially, I don't want somebody, us accidentally enabling somebody who is at, enrolled in Forge for some other reason, whether it's uh, governor school or something else, and attached to the sibling pol policy for bringing a sibling <laughs> along that's not 
going to be in in uh this this is only for the kids that are being redistributed essentially so what you're saying is it doesn't apply to any student that's there under a, a waiver right now right okay that that makes sense <coughs> Okay, I thank you, uh, board members, and um, thank you for your indulgence and um, working to craft that policy to to respond to the the many comments that we received in that area. Madam Chair, just one one question, just of clarification. So, so we'll craft this that policy some time between now and is it ne and next week? Well, we have the the draft of it. We're going to tweak mm -hmm. it with Great. some with a, a few okay. things um, as soon as uh, that's available, as soon as we activate the agenda, which will be in two days. But I mean the intention is to approve that next week? Okay. As part of yep. when we, we, we have get to, to. X and 5.02? I, I think so. We that's can't what, put it off anymore. Right. I, I agree, and that's why I asked. Okay, got it. So then the next uh, item for information is 5.02, which was reviewing and approving uh, the colonial form redistricting options. This evening, the board spent a lot of time together going through uh, the current seven options that had been developed as we uh, worked in response to lots of comments that we had. The board members had an opportunity to work these pivot tables on their own, to come up with options, and to respond to comments by the, um, by the public. So based on that, we had a lively discussion. Um, again, this is a very difficult uh, matter. Believe me, there's lots of time and effort being spent to try and come up with the, next, the best option that, that we can for, our, um, for the challenges that we have at Colonial Forge. Uh, in the last few minutes, we had the, some options run for us and coming out of that session I believe that we had two options that we believe we will be going forward with that we will be considering for approval next Tuesday. Um, my notes are a mess so I may ask the indulgence of another board member to bring forth those options if they so choose or Mr. Oh he is okay. But well, has he caught his breath? Probably not. <laughs> he's hiding. Oh, he's well, hiding. That's I'll, why. I'll I keep you straight, Scott. I took good notes. <laughs> I know you will. Mm -hmm. um, Madam Chairman, board members, uh, Dr. Benson, um, the two options that we believe the board settled on coming out of the work session tonight, option A was derived from the original option seven, and it includes an APU 117 going to Mountain View High School. APU 124 going to Mountain View High School, APU 142 going to Mountain View High School, APU 143 in its entirety going to Mountain View High School, APU 166 Emory Mill North going to North Stafford High School, APU 166 Autumn Ridge going to North High School, um, North Stafford High School, and APU 187 going to Mountain View High School. That is option A. Do you, by chance, have the percentages in front of you or not? I do not. Okay, they're across. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> the second option this was option. This will all be posted on our website It tomorrow will, morning, yes, right? ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Once we oh. check them. Option B was derived from original option six, and it had APU 117 going to Mountain View High School, APU 124 to Mountain View High School, APU 142 to Mountain View High School, APU 143 in its entirety going to Mountain View High School, APU 163, Arbor Glen and Marshall Estates going to North Stafford High School, APU 166, Emory Mill North going to North Stafford High School, and APU 187 going to Mountain View High School. That is option B. When we ran these and these are still rounded numbers from quick notes we had for option a mountain view being at 90 percent north stafford around 93 percent and colonial forge moving to 90 percent like i said these can be um you know in that range with regard to option b we had mountain view at 90 percent north stafford at 91 percent and colonial forge moving to 93 percent so just for some um idea of of how the board looked at the balancing. 
Ms. Healy, do you have a comment? I, I hate to ask this question, but there was a street off Winding Creek that we discussed earlier. Do we need to specifically address that street? Or was that, I can't remember the name of it. It was the area I that do not is under that. consideration for the Winding Creek uh, subdivision. Well, it's it, actually a several roads, no? Well, th that's okay. I, I thought, you know what, on this uh, has Marshall Estates, which is on that side. Of it's Wine on the Creek. north side right. of Barbara Winding Glenn Creek. Is on this side. On was the south side. Was there not side. one street that was right there? There is. Well, I just, I just. There is. For consistency purposes. Yes, ma'am. There is a street right uh, on the right before you get to Shelton Shop. Okay. I believe that what we talked about, okay. and I'll certainly make sure it's is included, included in the here? description. I mean, for, it is. It, it would be it included. Is, it is all okay. I just want. I didn't yes, want to leave out <clears throat> a single street. To, kind of stranded and I, I know it was yes, a total of 30 we'll make sure total. it's included okay. in there in the description I'm sorry I, mi I misunderstood which street we were talking about we also had some discussion about um, as I was saying the winding Creek subdivision uh, that is not a current subdivision it is currently raw land that would be um, available that is under consideration by the Board of Super Supervisors um, and there's been some discussion by that board of uh, possibly using proffers for North Stafford High School. Is there any appetite of the board to consider putting that particular area into the North Stafford area, knowing right now we can't put how many kids would be in there? Is there an appetite to do that now, or do we want to uh, wait and see what happens? I, I, I guess would, I, Madam Chair, I would just my, mm -hmm. I would personally wait, because I think that's a move of how many kids, if sure. it would? It's 30 students. 30. And, and that's a, and 30 students, although we would have to notice it, that could be a superintendent. If, if, if unless everyone here knows all the uh, ins and outs of this move, to, to throw that move in at this point in, in time may not be a good idea. I think the, the line is actually kind of a natural draw down there because there's no homes, I believe, mm -mm. down to that courthouse intersection. So, you know, the, the line's drawn before the proposal's even been presented at the Board of Supervisors approved and homes are selling. So now's a, oh, no, I, I, if it's natural, you know, it's, it's kind of yeah, contrary no to what I said right earlier, but no. no. But so, I so there's no children sitting there right now is what you're saying. I, that's no what I didn't understand. Okay, no housing. Development has not yet been approved. Okay. What we're saying, if the development, you know, is approved or even if it's not approved, if it's going to be by right, that the, that the uh, district would be in North Stafford, and that would eliminate the, the issues we've had with people saying, my realtor told me this, or I thought I was going here. I mean, if, if, the, if it's a natural line from North Stafford, yeah. why not put them there it's now? Okay. Can, can I, I ask a question about proffers real quick, though? Um, aren't there guidelines that the county has kind of adhered us to at this point, that if the development is happening within their magisterial district, that that's where the proffer funds have to go to or is that not right no it's definitely not by magisterial district there is some preference for it to go to the school a school that's affected is that correct Scott or the area that's affected but that is not in stone that's correct I, I don't think it's uh, by policy but there has been uh, precedent set that certain supervisors uh, would like for those funds to go to schools within their magisterial district or at sometimes they even actually identify the specific school um, to and a specific project they've done that okay so so they basically have the right. free will to do that if they if they want to except I would say right. well I guess this this may or may not be under the new proffer legislation there usually needs to be a tie <laughs> it seems uh, it would seem amazing to me that you would build homes and then say, oh, the, those kids go to this high school, but the proffer money went to a different high school. I think that would be yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. Some supervisors have tried that. But the supervisors could in no way dictate what school district a subdivision goes to. That's our prerogative. That's, that's so I think that the question is, do we want to do it now do while it? it's undeveloped, before anything is sold, before it's even approved, and then yes. they would be yes. part of North Stafford? <clears throat> Yes. Why not? Yes, that's why. That's what, that's what I said. <laughs> so, so, Mr. Haran, is there a way that when, if we draw the maps for A and B that we can color the, that 
area. Yes, ma'am. Um, I know that's in the actual verbiage that we'll provide to you for the next board meeting, right. it will actually uh, provide it by street. Okay. And uh, you know, so we can you boundaries. can have boundaries. Yes, ma'am. Thank you yep. very much. So we'll add that to both A and B. Is that okay? All right. Very good. All right. I'm going to send this back down. Yeah. Chairman, just one more point. I mean, there are a lot of people here, and some are from the subdivisions that are directly affected by these two options. Some are from subdivisions that are not directly affected. I mean, are we in a position to assure the public, whether they're here or, or watching or going to read about it tomorrow, that we're not going to be adding any new APUs, streets, people, whatever, to these options that are under consideration? Because I think it would just be untenable to make those kinds of changes next week when we've, we've narrowed it down. I mean, we've been going through this for months. We now have two options that, you know, we may not all like them, but they are our options at this point. I mean, can we uh, agree on that? I think to solidify, it should probably be done in a way of a motion of some That's sort I would to say suggest. these are the two options that will be put on right. the agenda for information. Right, or right. Or I, well, well, of course they're going to be put on for information, but what I want to uh, say is, exactly is that uh, the, the board will not add anything to these options. If the board wants to take something away, we, you know, I'm not suggesting that. I think these numbers work. I think the percentages are as good as we're going to get. You know, they're 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 fairly across the board um but i don't want people to think that if they're not on here they could suddenly appear next week and that's why i just uh, yeah so so i guess well wait, this is an information item so i don't i don't know how that would be that, that's probably fine. maybe mr nelson could give us some advice that's on uh, <laughs> how, how could we Well, that takes away, I'd, I'd like to say that we'll consider A or B, that we can delete from either of these options, but we cannot add. Could we do that? Is that something you all would consider? You I, got I a could, second. Is that? Okay, Make that's motion. my motion. <laughs> Mr. Hirons. Yeah, it has been seconded. Right, thank okay, you. Any further, dis any discussion on the motion on the floor? Thank you. Hearing none. <laughs> hearing you all. That's right. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries aye. unanimously. All right. Now, <laughs> now we will be moving on to public comment. I have um, a page and a half of, of speakers. What I am proposing to do, I will name, I will read down to about six, um, six names. I would ask you to come forward, line up behind um, each other so you can move quickly to the podium. If you, for some reason, do not want to have your time, that, that's fine. You can shout out, you know, uh, not, not speaking or come forward. Please know these are not the only people who can speak at the conclusion of the list of names that I have, I will then invite and open the floor for anyone who wishes to also come forward and address the board. Before we get started, I um, will read our, our opening. Speakers, if you come forward, please identify yourself by name, address, organizational affiliation if you represent an organization. You can also announce the purpose or topic of your comments. Three minutes will be allotted to speakers. You will see we use the stoplight system. When you ha see the yellow light come on, you have one minute remaining. When the red light comes on, you are done. I give you about five seconds to wrap it up so we can move on to the next person. The chairman reserves the right to restrict the total citizen comment received at any particular meeting to a predetermined maximum number of minutes with the approval of the board. Please know this is when you come forward for citizen comment, it is not a dialogue with us. It is a time for us to hear your comment. We will not dialogue and, and have an exchange with you. Citizen comment which is profane, abusive, or which threatens imminent physical harm shall be ruled out of order by the chairman. And although the board provides the opportunity for citizen comment, individuals desiring to register complaints against division employees or division programs, services, or activities may also utilize the procedures outlined in policy 1113, public complaints. So I will start off um, with the first six names. Jacob 
Porzensky, uh, Brian Schusler. Brian Schuster, right okay, here. Okay, thank you. Adela Bertoli, Kathy Close, and make a, Mike Mincer, and Denise Slater. If you all could just line up, that would be great. And we'll get started with Jacob. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead. She'll start the clock when you start speaking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I acknowledge that uh, you have taken mm -hmm. Augustine off of the table, and I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But I would still like to get this on record in mm -hmm. case there are any unseen developments. <laughs> so <laughs> I would, yeah. there's a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I would like to start by saying that I'm here to give reasons why we should go to Colonial Forge. For the first reason Augustine North should go to Colonial Forge is that we are one of the closest neighborhoods in proximity to this school. Another important reason we should go to Colonial Forge is that our parents helped pay for the, build, the building of the school when we moved in. Also, we were the first neighborhood to go to Forge. Then there's the personal level. It directly affects us. We're not just forecast to kids. Some of us have been, lived here our whole lives. For example, my brother. He's been my biggest role model and he seems to think exactly as I do. He went to Colonial Forge and is now a first year at UVA. I aspire to be like him, and part of that is following his school path, which I can't do at some other schools. One of my most anticipated classes is EMT, which is only offered at Forge. I want to take this class along with many other necessary APs to keep on track with my, the medical career, bleh, career path I, would, <laughs> I desire to take. I built my life plan a lot around these programs in, in the environment of this school. So if you take away the school, you're derailing my dreams. And last of all, we have memories at the school. It's not just statistics for most of us. I remember my br brother's graduation, soccer tournaments, orientations, teachers, friends, and school pride. And for someone else, Forge might just be another high school. I'm not asking for the school board to play favorites. It's just logic. We're one of the oldest, well-established neighborhoods in Stafford County, and we've been going there since it, w since it was opened. Thank you for your time, and I appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, Brian Schuster from Augustine North. Um, thank you. I think 90% of what I had to say coming in here was, was undercut by your decision just a moment ago, and probably the rest of it was, was reiterated by Jacob there. So I don't have much original uh, or many original points to make. I think you, you're making the right decision. Um, I think uh, I attended the working session earlier, um, and I heard a lot of thoughtful, nuanced discussion. I know how hard you've been working at this and, um, and, and what a break this will be when this decision is made and that really there's, there's no popular decision. Um, reiterate um, the points that really resonated are the fact that Augustine North is, I think many people uh, think of it as the founding neighborhood of Colonial Forge. Uh, it was the neighborhood that proffered uh, the, the development of the high school. Um, I think that the uh, Courthouse Road corridor is the core Forge district uh, to include Augustine North, to include Amy Clay, um, Berkshire, um, a, a lot of the, that zone that I think people have historically considered our neighborhood. Um, there's so many things. I had lists and lists of factors that we're going to argue tonight um, that I won't go into depth on, but just a few to quickly go through. I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a sidewalk being built that will put Forge within walking distance of, neighbor, uh, of Augustine North. Driving there, there are two turns on the courthouse road, uh, and it's a little over a mile. One turn out of the neighborhood, one turn into the high school. Um, there's a street in Augustine North that's named Colonial Forge. I would hate the irony of a student living on Colonial Forge Drive and attending Mountain View High School. Um, so there are so many good reasons. Um, I think, you know, at this point, um, I'd like to just say thank you, give back the rest of the time so this can move quickly tonight. Thanks again. Good evening, Adela Bertoldi, 10 Kingsley Court, Stafford, Augustine North. Um, I want to leave time for uh, people who are going to be affected by your two decision or your two options of A and B. But I do want to state that um, as the vice president of the HOA for Augustine North, I am here representing um, uh, the. Um, our community this evening. Um, we did collect petitions that we wanted to present to you. We have over 400 of them, 70 of which Jake actually um, was supposed mm -hmm. to give to you, but I took those from him. And um, I want to submit them for the record um, so that you have them. But I want to thank you very much. I know this is a very tough decision, and um, I know that it was very thoughtful in, 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 um, in what you've come up with. So thank you very much. My name 
name is Mike Mincer. Uh, I live in Augustine North. Uh, I'd like to comment regarding the school board's redistricting option at this point. Uh, not opposed to any of the f fine schools in Stafford County, but uh, Augustine North has a special relationship with Colonial Forge. Uh, as you heard, uh, I'd like to uh, emphasize the land that it stands on was donated by Augustine. Uh, we helped pay for the public water hookup for the high school. Uh, in addition, uh, it is one of the major selling points for homes in Augustine, uh, it certainly was for us. Uh, and it helps for, even for people whose children have grown up uh, and gone on to college and such, uh, it helps with the resale value of their homes, uh, which raises the issue about if uh, the homes in Augustine are no longer going to Colonial Forge, then perhaps their value uh, is reduced, which could be considered a taking. Uh, in any case, uh, it could change the value of the property, which would reduce the tax income to the county, something that you might not have even thought about. So uh, I'd like to mention that for your consideration. Uh, the other point, uh, you mentioned that uh, there is a grandfathering of siblings uh, that could stay at Colonial Forge long enough uh, to graduate, that wasn't clear, or only as long as the sibling is at Colonial Forge. You might want to try to clarify that. Um, that's about all I have, uh, but I would like to ask your consideration of these points and the other points raised by other residents of Augustine this evening. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Kathy Close. I'm also from Augustine North, so many of my comments are also um, moot at this point. But I would like to ask that um, in the future that um, you do as you did tonight, where you provide input um, to the Board of Supervisors so when they're approving future neighborhoods, they are zoned previous to the homes being built so that we don't have this happen again. And, and I know we're looking at redistricting again and again, but. I think it makes a big difference when those neighborhoods are designated prior to the first housing is going in. Um, I'd also like to ask that with any future growth, um, that that growth doesn't come at the expense of the school programs such as CGS, IB, STAT, AP classes, that you in fact look to expand those programs rather than either keep the status quo or reduce them, and that we bring all our high schools into parity so that when we look at them, one doesn't seem to other, everyone to be better than the others. Um, I think your students, as you saw tonight, are, are very vested and passionate about their schools, and, um, and they really look to their, your, our schools to help guide them in their future and, and give them a platform to launch from. And, and I would ask that you keep that in mind um, in, when you build future schools and when you add programs to the schools that you already have. Thank you. I'm going to read the next names I have. I have Denise Slater, Peter Ferraro, Stacy Ferraro, Marlon Haran, and Dana Brown. The Ferraros wave our time. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> Sorry. Good evening. My name is Marlon Heron. I'm also a member and resident of the Augustine North community. Um, I would like to um, first thank you for putting forth um, what appears to be a well thought out um, plan. I have no objections to the remaining plans that you pre presented tonight. Um, they appear to address my original concern and also appear to um, do a, a fine job of rebalancing the numbers, which was part of the original goal. Um, I would ask the board to reconsider, just looking forward now, um, reconsider the prospect of um, standing up a, um, a, a, a growth planning committee 
Um, that would certainly help us to avoid um, landing in this predicament in the future. Um, I would also um, ask the board to um, consider accelerating plans to build a new school, as that would also help us to accommodate the, the expected growth. And finally, I would ask the board to um, give some consideration to um, establishing a moratorium on building um, when, where necessary, um, contingent on c creating a sustainable growth plan. Um, and again, all those, those recommendations are designed at looking forward to the future and preventing us from being right back where we are today. Thank you. Thank you. I think I have four dropout between me and, and the other guy. I'm Dana Brown. I live in the Rock Hill District. I have a child at Mountain View and at Norris. She's a travel student, goes to Governor's School, home based at Mountain View. And um, I was at your work session tonight, and I want to say it was very fluid, to say the least, regarding your numbers, but I was tracking along with you. And to be the wet blanket, I am not convinced that you're doing the math correctly for the total attendance percentages, specifically. I'm not sure that you're, cal uh, you're calculating the travel students to North Stafford correctly. This year, North Stafford has 1,659 kids in it right now. We have 204 kids traveling in and 56 traveling out, which means they're gaining about 150 students every day. That's butts in seats, using desks, using teachers. Um, that's about an additional 9% for the travel students. That means we have some other schools that are under what their attendance percentages are. My daughter is leaving Mountain View for half a day to go to North. She's one of those 204. So there's an empty seat in Mountain View for half a day. I don't think you're taking that into consideration. Um, your options, I believe option A was 13 and B was 16, I think. Um, option, the old 13, left North Stafford at 93.76% um, for attendance percentages. You got to add those nine travel, those nine percent travel students, because they are going to be there sitting in those seats. That's going to bring it up to 102.76 percent. If you do option B, which I think was the former 16 percent, um, I think you calculated out 91.07 would be the total percentage. You got to add that nine in, so you're at 100.07. Either way, you're over 100 percent attendance at North Stafford by doing these two options that you did. And you, I know you can't say you can't count them twice, but you, you got to. My kid is leaving a seat at Mountain View, opening up a seat there. So whatever the total is at Mountain View this year, 1750, she's one less, plus all of her, you know, her students that go with her. North is up, so you got to add that in when you're putting all those new kids in, because we don't want to end up at 100% when everybody else is at 90 and 91. Thanks. Thank you. I'm going to read um, a few additional names. Michelle Group or Grupa, um, Clara Schuster, Scott, oh my, Clemens maybe, and then Ellen Vandeveer. So if any of, the, any of you all want to speak, please feel free to come forward or if you want to waive your time, whatever you'd like. I'm not trying to, but please come on forward. Great. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chairman, Board, Supervisor. My name is Scott Clemens. I'm uh, also a board member at Augustine. <clears throat> and I don't, uh, uh, first let me say I very much appreciate the effort that you have put in. I was at your uh, work session also. I uh, got to see how the sausage was made over there. It's not a pretty sight. Uh, but there is one point I do want to bring up and that is you're planning for growth. I do understand you are projecting students going forward, uh, trying to accommodate those that will be moving in. Uh, I just don't want to forget about the actual students that are currently in the schools. Um, I know it's a <clears throat> marketing plan that some of these developers use to promote one school over the other. Every school in Stafford County is excellent. Every student in Stafford County deserves a fair shake and I think we do need to give extra weight to students that are here or have been here over those that are projected to come in. Thank you very much.
at, the, at this time, anybody else who would like to address the board, feel free to come forward. If you want to speak, feel free to go ahead and line up so you can go run right after each other. That would be, that would be great. And um, we'll keep going. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And announce your name, please. Yes, I will. And then sign I'm, in. <laughs> thanks. I'm Chris Noderft. I'm also from Augustine North. Um, and last, uh, on Sunday, we had a, uh, a session at the Homeowners Association um, and spoke to Ms. Healy. And I want to reiterate the point that I made to Ms. Healy. We will experience uh, redistricting in the future, especially when the new high school is built. And so I strongly urge the board to move forward with ensuring that the uh, programs such as APPX, IB, and Colonial Governor School to the best, greatest extent possible are expanded to all schools so that it, it certainly decreases the impact that uh, redistricting would have on those, those students. Thank you. Thanks. Don't forget to sign in right behind, right behind you. Come on down. all know the drill by now <laughs> hi thank you for the opportunity to speak I also had a prepared uh, statement which I feel now is mostly moot but um, I do have some suggestions that I would like to bring up uh, after attending all the meetings and looking at all the numbers it didn't look like a whole lot of kids were going to actually be moved um, We've been talking about ghost children that don't exist yet. But um, I just want to share my thoughts with the board. I am in one of the options, so I do have a stake in the game. Um, but these are my thoughts. I know that you're going to go with one of the options, but please take these into consideration. Uh, voluntary student transfer. This is something I heard that there may be plenty of students that are at Forge that may want to go to another school. And if they are given the option, it could definitely open up some space in the school. Uh, the other option is a lottery system. I watched the work session on February 16th, and I saw somebody bring up the fact that there are no, there's no way to prove that these children currently live in the district and attend this school. And it was brought up there was too much work involved with proving residency. Why can't we come up with a lottery system where you check the residency of 50 to 100 students? And maybe that's less work, but at least you might be able to catch some students that are going to the school that no lo longer live in the district. I mean, I've been in the district 17 years. My kids have an option to be kicked out of the school. And there may be kids there that don't live in the district. And we have no way to check that. Uh, the other option is county employee policy. I appreciate all the county employees. I understand it's a benefit of the county employees to uh, select a school for their children to go to. That's a benefit they have. But I would like to see a number of how many county employees have children at that school. Um, it's not fair for whole neighborhoods to be moved out of their school district to accommodate this benefit. I mean, there should be another way to look at this benefit, maybe give them a different benefit. Um, this is something that may not be a popular argument with some of my friends who work for the county, but it's certainly something that's bothering me. The other issue I have is the feeder school argument. Our neighborhood has been selected, I think, to be moved to North Stafford in one of the options because we go to HH Pool. Rodney Thompson feeds into three different high schools. It's not fair to say, because you go to HH Pool, you have to go to North Stafford. I feel that's a disservice to the children. You cannot always be going to school with your friends. At some point in life, you have to learn that, I have one more point, can I please, since nobody else is speaking. Large neighborhoods are being districted as a whole group, Augustine, Stafford Lakes, Austin Ridge are not being considered to be split up. I don't understand how it's fair for larger neighborhoods to be given preferential treatment when smaller neighborhoods, you're cutting out three small neighborhoods to accommodate one large one. So those are my thoughts. I'm gonna submit my, my comments. They go on and on, but here you go. <laughs> Thank you. At this time, is there any, okay. Yep, come on down, sorry. <laughs>
Good evening. Um, thank you. Um, I am Barbara Rice. I'm from uh, Autumn Ridge. And of course, we're on the chopping board was one of the options. I have come to every meeting. Um, I lived here 27 years ago, and now I'm finishing my three older children at school and retired here. So I have felt like I've had a very definite interest in this because I picked our home due to the schools that my two older daughters wanted to go to. Yes, you are talking about a grandfather clause. That's not the point. The point is this is going to be our future home. I have a, a younger children that are going to also want to go on to school. I just, I feel like I spent so much time looking, putting a lot of value in the one op object that I hadn't been able to put a lot of time and effort into with the kids growing up, and that was the school they went to. I've put a lot of time into research into what school I wanted them to go to and what school they wanted to go to. I am missing my daughter's performance this evening because I felt this was very important that I attend, even though I couldn't go to the workshop. I have went all of this. I just see that you're pu putting numbers into spots. And it bothers me that nobody's looking at the entire picture of the county. That picture makes no sense. The APUs do not make sense. Why you would cut out a small community like Autumn Ridge just because it might have the number you need right now just to make it look like you've moved something over. And I don't care if it's North Stafford or Mountain View. It's the point you're moving us out of the school we picked the school we chose, the school we, apparently the whole community has been there since the school started. I have very much respect for North Augustine and any other community, but um, Autumn Ridge has been there for the, the full time that school has been open to Colonial Forge. I feel that, I'm very passionate about this. I'm, I don't want to see anybody get cut. What I'd like to see is the numbers to make sense. I'd like to see school the com communities that are next to North Stafford going to North Stafford. And that includes communities who don't want to go, Brookshire or anyone else. They're right in the backyard. But there's also those right across the street that we don't even know the APUs of. They're going to Mountain View. I just feel like there's so much more information here that we have not been given. And we're just looking at this like, who can we sacrifice? Who can we move? Winding Creek, 97 homes or whatever they're going to be popping up. I know it's going to pass. I've been to both of the board meetings for it. They're on the verge of coming. They're right next to Brookshire. They're right in behind North Stafford. Yet, they're a ghost. So was North Embry. We don't know what the numbers are going to be. So are we going to come back in two or three years and have to redo this and move more children up, root more kids? I just would love for you to just show me the entire map of the county and show me how the APUs work so that I can feel like this is fair. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Stacy Sykes. I live in Autumn Ridge, um, and I came here to talk about the redistricting. Um, and I, as of tonight, I know you've solidified your two options, but I'd really like to give you um, just a couple more, even though you've already said you're not gonna change. Um, I know it's not popular to suggest dividing subdivisions between, school, between schools. However, Stafford County is already doing that at the elementary level. The Hampton Oaks subdivision currently has half their children going to Hampton Oaks, and half their children go into Winding Creek Elementary. <clears throat> it can be done at the high school level. I respectfully ask the board to reach out to Hampton Oak residents and ask them how their community dealt with that tough decision. It just doesn't seem fair that the large subdivisions of 800 plus homes like Stafford Lakes, Austin Ridge, and Embry Mill are taking up such a large portion of the student body at Colonial Forge. By dividing these subdivisions among two different high schools, or maybe even three, that would make for a more diverse student body at all the high schools. And lastly, I would also like the board to consider looking at the, the two subdivisions down on 610, both which open up to 610, their, their entrances, and they're right down the street from Moore Stafford. And that is St. George's, which has 450 homes, 454 homes, and Apple Grove, which has 295, all which go to Mountain View. If they were moved to north, it's possible that Mountain View would open up so you could ship Stafford Lakes kids partly there and half to Colonial Forge. I'm just giving you options. 
because I feel like I know that this is like my last ditch hope to, to, to bring any suggestion to the table. But I think those, those subdivisions down the end of 610 haven't ever been discussed. And they're, they're quite significant in numbers. 450 houses could make a big difference in, in what you're trying to do with redistricting the schools. Um, so anyways, thank you for your time. I appreciate all the hard work you've done to try to make this a, a uh, doable process. But I know it's been hard on you, and I appreciate your hard work. Thank you. Uh, good evening. I'm Todd Brown from uh, Autumn Ridge. And uh, so I've been at almost every meeting you've conducted on this, um, including some of the uh, board members' uh, individual meetings. Um, so uh, just a few comments. So at this point, I am, I think, in favor of option B, if I was able to collect your numbers that you were speedily um, you're rushing through in the working meeting. Because um, I would like my neighborhood to remain uh, attending Colonial Forge. We're an established neighborhood. We've been there 18 years. We have the same lineage that the other neighborhoods uh, in the courthouse corridor have. And, it, and, and I think I brought this up at the very first meeting. Number one, I'm frustrated we didn't do a countywide redistricting. I appreciated the effort to start look at APUs outside of Colonial Forge District, which was done at the very last minute instead of in the beginning. I asked you guys to do that in the beginning, and it wasn't tabled until late. Um, we're ending up with a geography that doesn't make a lot of sense with either option. And, and I know there's this, this idea that the six high school is gonna happen for this county. I don't share the same optimism that the Board of Supervisors share on that. And so I wish we would have done a five high school redistricting now instead of waiting. Cause you're gonna wait and then we'll see. $120 million is a lot of money. And taxpayers have you know, done, you've heard a lot from taxpayers about how we've contributed to the schools and they're, they're gonna have two sides of that discussion over a new high school. Um, you know, the other thing, we certainly, you know, the Winding Creek situation, I'm extremely familiar with that. I've been before the Board of Supervisors numerous times about it. Um, it it's the, a thing that you should be doing in the future is looking to future neighborhoods and, and districting them in advance. That one makes a lot of sense to me. It is 30 students. It's going to happen. It's right off Winding Creek Road. The geography already doesn't make sense, you know, in terms of some of the other decisions that are being made in, in either option A or option B. Um, you know, so, so I, those are, you know, additional things that I would say. And, and so I would just close that I do understand how much you've put into this process. I do think if you did a relook at the process um, and, and did some of the thinking that happened later, um, that some of your decisions might have been more informed and that some of your considerations of individual APUs and why they should be in one district or another would have been more informed by uh, additional data, more detailed data, and, and then the debates that you had over which APUs should go where would be uh, in, informed by a little bit richer data than what I saw happening as we went through this process. The county needs a robust process and methodology, I think was brought up, for redistricting schools. And, and, and whatever you can do to tie to the Board of Supervisors, I, I will be engaging the Board of Supervisors in some capacity in relation to schools and, and future homes because it needs to be linked in some fashion, and I get how the county develops pretty well. We're not gonna stop it. So we need some linkage in school capacity to development that is manageable for the county. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm uh, Brett Downs uh, from Autumn Ridge. I just wanted to start off by uh, thanking Chris for uh, fighting so uh, strongly for our, our neighborhood and for our district, and uh, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Thank you all of you guys for your time and for your efforts that you've put into this exciting job. I can tell how, how, how unstressful it's been and how satisfying it's been for you guys, but I, I thank you guys for your efforts. And um, the only other point I wanted to make is, is for High School 6, please plan to make it two times, make it big enough to hold four to 6,000 students so that when it's done being built, we're not in this exact same problem. Busing people all over, that's one of the biggest costs for any, 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 any school board is, is the busing cost. And when you're busing people all over the county, it's just not effective. So please try to make that a real high school, a high school that can handle the future growth of this county. Um, we're gonna end up probably with 14 by the time we're done, but for high school six, let's try to make it a high school that can house 
four to five thousand students. Thank you guys for your time. Madam Chairperson and members of the board, uh, my name is Arnaldo Dominguez. I live in the Lake Estate subdivision. I'd like to thank you for your uh, for taking your time to read all the concerns of our uh, community members and addressing these concerns. We'd also, um, there, I've got a couple other members out here from our community, but we'd like, we appreciate everything that you've done, everything that you have addressed, and we would also like uh, very much so if you consider not deleting us from either option A or B. Thank you. All right, is there anybody else who wishes to address the board? Okay, I, I don't see anybody jumping up. Okay, if so, then I'm gonna close. Oh, no, okay. Um, anybody who spoke, make sure that you signed in. Um, thank you all for your uh, comments this evening. And we will move on. I will close cu public comment at this time, and we will move on to item six, seven, which is our board member committee reports. I will first turn to Mr. 701. 701. 701 is the uh, student manager discipline committee? <clears throat> yes. Let's see, on February 16, 2017, the committee of the board met to consider seven student disciplinary ma matters. The committee suspended student A for 14 days out of school, suspended student B for 14 days out of school, suspended student C for the remainder of the 2016-17 school year, and authorized student C to attend the Regional Alternative Education Program. Suspended student D for the remainder of the 2016-2017 school year and authorized student D to attend the Regional Alternative Education Program. <coughs> Suspended student E for 10 days. Expelled student F and authorized student F to attend the Regional Alternative Education Program. Expelled student G and authorized student G to attend the Regional Alternative Education Program. Thank you. Sounds like we opened up a lot a of long, seats. That was a long day. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> All right, moving on to board committee reports. Uh, I know that there have been some board committees that have met since the last time we met, which was actually a while ago. So, Ms. Egan, you want to start us off? Um, well, last night we, um, we met with the, um, the other three members of the Board of Supervisors, which uh, consists of um, um, Mr. Cavalier, Mr. Snellings, Ms. Sellers, myself, Ms. Healy, and Ms. Decatur. Um, we met to further discuss a little bit more about the joint CIP, um, which is actually now one step closer to becoming reality. Uh, Dr. Benson and County Administrator Foley um, kind of mapped out the framework for um, how this was going to, um, to progress. Um, so between them and the staff, um, we've, we've got a nice framework um, going forward. We also discussed the shared services. We're, we're just a few more steps closer to um, having that completed as well. Um, that'll be kind of piecemeal as we go forward, but um, uh, we'll have, well, hopefully within the next several meetings, we'll have something to come back to both boards with, um, kind of lay out kind of how we're, we're looking at, you know, mapping this whole thing out. So. Exciting stuff is happening, so I think we're, we were all left last night pretty pleased. So. Um, I, I'm also going to take the opportunity to say I'm going to have to leave. <laughs> um, my, I, I don't know if, the, if all of you know, but my son, uh, <laughs> yeah. who plays for Brook Point, um, did a fantastic catch last night um, at a game up in Alexandria, and caught the ball and landed on his wrist. So he fractured one side of his wrist and broke the other. So I was out, we were in the emergency room last night until... He made the catch, uh, though. He made the catch, and he still had the ball in the mitt so. um, as they took him away. So um, we spent the night in the emergency room last night. He's uh, texted me. He's in a little bit of a pain, a little bit of pain. So I'm going to go be with him. Um, sorry, I can't stay for the whole thing, but thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Irene. That's right. Thank you, Irene. Ms. Healy, do you have any report or anything for committee reports? No. Mr. I just have one. The FAB committee it was sc uh, scheduled originally for tomorrow night, but we moved that um, 
until April 5th, but April 5th is the um, Service Excellence yes. Awards Night, and I also have another personal conflict. I'm asking as FAB members, can we do it on Thursday, April 6th? Uh, I'm out the 5th and the 6th. Well, what good are you? <laughs> we will reconvene. We'll, I'll get with the clerk to try and find a date, and we'll put, we'll put the word out. Sorry. Okay. That's all I had, I think. Okay. Mr. McCasker. Yes, you? thank you. Um, talk about the gifted committee first. Um, um, I attended the regional destination imagination tournament, which took place on Saturday, uh, the 4th. Um, at North Stafford High School, um, and Mr. Uh, Mr. Connolly, I saw him there as well. Um, 17 teams from the Stafford uh, Advance to the state level tournament, which will take place on Saturday, uh, April 8th, at uh, at Lee High School in Mechanicsville. And just a wonderful job by the teachers and the support personnel and all the kids from the region. Uh, that was a great day, and uh, appreciate Mr. Connolly being there sharing a little bit with me. Um, Agents of Change Day is April 8th at Colonial Forge High School from 10 to 2 p.m. 30 schools will participate in donations of non-perishable food items or books. Uh, Mission Impossible Engineering Challenge will also take place for some schools at the Agent of Change Day. So we hope to see you there. Middle school teachers are currently working with students to set up interviews for the Commonwealth's Governor School. Now this is a little bit old, so that may have taken place already. <laughs> Um, middle school Model UN uh, teams travel to William and Mary to participate in the Model UN, and that was uh, February 24th, 26th. I, I don't know the results of that. Um, elementary focus students are currently working on independent study issues across the across the division. And um, just the last thing for gifted was the summer opportunities. Um, Gifted and, and CGS, I should say, the applications are underway for the Fredericksburg Regional Governor School, uh, reg Residential Governor School Program, and the Career and Technical Education Governor School. Summer discovery, so there's several, several uh, things that they do this summer at little to no expense, and uh, those applications are out now. Um, I have one here, and they are due back uh, no later than March 31st. Things like Chesapeake Bay Watershed Experience, uh, it's a week. Uh, International Spy Museum. Can I go? Yeah, it's, it's a lot of wonderful things. Um, college trip to Georgetown University in the US Capitol. STEM Engineering Management Workshop. Um, and the uh, National Audiovisual Conservation Center, Library of Congress, Packard Theater, and Culpeper. Um, so there's a lot of wonderful opportunities going on there. Um, last Thursday, we had our Commonwealth Governor School meeting, uh, which I dialed into, and then I ran right to the discipline meeting uh, um, an hour later. Um, on March 4th, the CGS participated in the Governor School, the first Governor School Quiz Bowl at Mountain Vista Governor School in Warrington. This was the first time that the Governor Schools competed in this Quiz Bowl match, and 23 CGS students from Stafford, King George, and Spotsylvania participated in the event. The annual snowball dance, which I know some of you have attended, um, occurred on March 11th uh, at the Eagles Lodge in uh, Falmouth. Uh, the CGS had a record turnout of 517 students and guests that attended the event that night. Um, as part of the ticket price, the students were to donate a box of non-perishable snacks. Uh, 19 elementary schools and middle schools, as well as Stafford Junction and the Head Start program in the region received hungry tummy donations. Many thanks to uh, all the folks for helping that out and the numerous PTO members that volunteered. Uh, it was a wonderful event. I was there. Um, as I've mentioned, the summer enrichment packets are out. Don't hesitate. Um, school division administration and board members and county representatives and parents are invited to the third annual Senior Culminating Symposium on April 26th at Mary Washington College on the Stafford campus. Seniors will be presenting their culminating research product project, uh, which is two years worth of research, product design, and correspondence with experts in their field of study. The CGS office will be mailing invitations to community stakeholders and board members. You should get a, a copy. Um, if you haven't been to the culminating project uh, of the CGS Regional School, it's, it's truly amazing. Of course, we have already received briefings from uh, the young lady last year who is doing research on uh, the moon, the moonshot, 
uh, working with the space administration and working with private space industries for manned uh, vehicles. But the topics that these kids are, uh, are, are kind of leading the way in for, for the, as the seniors and juniors are just amazing. Um, and they're going to do great things. Um, I think I'll hold off on that since it has been a late night, but I do have more and I'll have make sure that this gets out to the board. Thank you. Mr. Cater, any com board comments or, or committee reports? Sorry, we're on committee reports. I'm going to save my committee reports for the next meeting. The um, Special Education Advisory Committee is meeting currently. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll have some bigger and better updates for everyone uh, at our next meeting and I look forward to sharing that because they've got some wonderful uh, new programs that they've been uh, collaborating with with some outside people to start up and uh, it's very exciting stuff but I'll have some more details next time. Mr. Collin, any board report? Committee report, sorry. Uh, I don't have a committee report. I had a quick comment if you want to come back around or. Sure. Or do you, um, let me do my committee sure. report and then I'll come back. <laughs> uh, just quick for committee reports, uh, the Fine Arts Advisory Committee. It's always great to go there. I don't have to sing, but it's great. Um, the, be the most exciting thing is, of course, I'm sure everybody has on their calendar for this. It's true. This weekend is the Fine Arts Festival. So I hope that um, we will see you there. There is also a rumor that a certain superintendent might be playing some music as well. That's, mm. the, that's the good part about being on the Fine Arts Committee. You learn all these things. But you always hide his schedule. You can never find him. I hear it's Sunday morning, <laughs> around <laughs> 11 maybe. I don't know. Oh. We'll see. We'll see if I'm right. Okay. Um, so that's a, a, something that's being worked on that spends a lot of time. For any of you who have never been, it is such a great celebration of the arts um, in our schools and the amazing talent of our students. Um, the other thing will be a Head Start Committee, um, Head Start Policy Council. Been meeting with them. They will be bringing some of their funding requests and some of the year-end closeout information, which I think will show what a great investment our Head Start dollars are in our children. Next, I'll move on to our board comments. And Mr. Connolly, how about you start with that? Thank you. Um, first of all, as, as I'm getting more used to this role, I had my first uh, disciplinary hearing last week where I came in and a few members of the board um, got to hear some of the disciplinary cases going on and, and, and we played a role in um, making a decision on, on things. And I just wanted to, for, for the parents out there who are not familiar with this process, uh, I was very impressed. Um, and I compliment Mr. Nelson who oversees the disciplinary um, program. Um, the students come in, they make their case, their parents sometimes are there, sometimes are not, they sometimes can bring character witnesses and um, I just want you to know the discipline, uh, it's taken very seriously and I, I was just very impressed by it um, and I, it was reassuring that uh, to know that um, um, we got folks watching out for our kids so it was it was really really good to see. Uh, and second I just want to uh, quickly just mention on the um, redistricting and with the um, sibling policy I I just wanted to thank Chairwoman Hazard. Um, she helped let me put my name on it, but she has done the yeoman's work on this policy. And so, um, uh, you know, she obviously heard loud and clear from folks. And um, so I just want to thank you for that. <laughs> Ms. Decatur, you want to have any broad comments? Committee, or not committee, sorry, member reports, <laughs> comments? I'll pass. Okay. Mr. McCosker. Very quickly. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to read a book or two uh, at Read Across America Day. I know many of us did that, or Dr. Seuss's birthday. Um, a special thanks to Mr. J.R. Raybolt and Ms. Furchek in our first grade class at Conway Elementary, and to Mr. Mike Seibotham and Ms. Roman's first grade class at Grafton Ele uh, Village Elementary. That's it. What did you read? You the read? two books that I read is Walk It in Your Pocket and Mr. Brown Can Moo. Every night. I know it by heart. Mr. Brown can move, <laughs> so can you. Mr. Mrs. Decatur, have you tried Go Dog Go? That's my favorite. <laughs> uh, I'll bring it to you. And they all end up in the tree. Yeah. That's right. That's, That's right. right. In my hat. In my hat. hat. Yep. Ms. Healy, would you like to? <laughs> well, just, just briefly, I want to say how proud I am of our students that we recognize tonight, the awards that we gave. And I think it is significant to note that we celebrated achievements from students at every one of our high schools that we have remarkable students you know at every school and that's in part because of the remarkable teachers 
that we have in every school, the strong administrators, and perhaps most important, the families that are supporting these, these students. So I, I just, I think we're blessed. And of course, I guess we'll give some recognition to Dr. Benson. <laughs> um, you, you, you do play an important part because you set the tone for this school district. So I, I, I think it's, it's a good time to honor you know, our, our students and celebrate our schools. And, and also I want to recognize um, Dr. Stemple. I mean, he has been around a long, long time, and I think it's significant that he is getting uh, acknowledged and, and his role that he has that touches the school community outside of Stafford County, and it's, it's, it's you know, statewide, and I, I think that is a significant achievement. And he is an example of the dedicated and commit, committed administrators that we have that, um, have, have been with us for a long, long time. So we're, we are indeed fortunate. The only other thing I wanted to mention is that I received an invitation today from AG Wright to go to a mock trial on um, Friday. And I, I don't have the details, but they said it was in conjunction with the courts. And I assume this is something that, you know, on a uh, probably a much um, smaller level than what North Stafford did because unfortunately I was out of town or I would have been there because I, I understand that the North Stafford mock trial, which the, uh, the Commonwealth Attorney's Office participated in, Judge um, Michael Levy, you know, presided. There were uh, the Sheriff's Department participated. We had um, defense lawyers and prosecutors and uh, I mean, it would have been fantastic to go. But that, that touched 700 students from what I read in the paper. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure about A.G. Wright, but, but I wanted to send a special invitation. I assume I'm able to take a guest to Mrs. Kale, because way back when, um, good God, my daughter's out of college, in graduate school, but when she was in, a, I think, the fifth grade, my husband worked with Betty Fitzhugh, who is still at Garrisonville, the focus teacher, to set up a mock trial. And we actually did it in one of the Stafford County courtrooms. Um, the, the bailiffs, the, 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 one of the students was a bailiff, and um, Judge Cox was the judge. And it was the, the big bad wolf and the three little pigs. And Mrs. Kale was a good enough sport to be the big bad wolf. And we had the students who were the defense attorneys, we had the prosecutors, and there were several charges, and one of them was blowing the house down, and, and among others. But she did get convicted. <laughs> and she got handcuffed and led out of the courtroom. Now they took them off pretty soon, but I don't know if those pictures are still at Garrisonville, but, but I'd love you to be my, uh, my companion to go to A.G. Wright, because I'm sure some of those people will, will remember when you were arrested. I, they, they probably <laughs> uh, expunged that record, but I remember. <laughs> so anyway, exciting things are happening in, in all our schools. And, you know, just, just take advantage of them. And, and thank those teachers when you get a chance, because they're the ones making a difference, you know, for every one of our kids. Mr. Harris. Deputy, second row, right down here. That's right. Just in case, keep an eye on her. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I have to uh, uh, do here is uh, I also went on Dr. Seuss's birthday, Read Across America, and read to Mrs. Whitford's third grade, third grade class in Conway Elementary. Um, I read Green Eggs and Ham. I like, I like to keep it simple, traditional, <laughs> the classic. Bring food. The best. <laughs> Mrs. Whitford had her students do a little writing assignment for us, and she wrote us a letter as well. Dear school board members, I currently teach third grade at Conway Elementary. After reading about other counties giving back snow days, I decided to discuss the issue with my students. In third grade, students are, are taught how to write a per, uh, persuasive paragraph. <laughs> I thought this would be a great idea, a great way to have them write for a real life purpose. We, may, we began with a vote for getting out of school early or staying in school. <laughs> Most students wanted to get out early. I had one student say she wanted to stay in school. The other students couldn't believe her choice. So I had her tell her classmates why she wanted to stay in school. She told them she wanted to go get a better education and be with her teacher and friends. The students returned to their seats to write uh, their rough draft. By the end of the writing time, I had seven more students who decided <laughs> that they too wanted to stay in school. 
<laughs> they, they went on to edit and rewrite their letters. I appreciate you taking the time to read their work and help them realize that we do write for a purpose. Thanks again, Rebecca Whitford. And I'll, I'll read just one sample here. Dear school board members, I think we should get out of school early with our extra snow days. I can go swimming. Also, I can spend more time with my family. This is important later in the story. I can fly to Boston again. Also, I can play with my friends more. Sincerely, Max Hirons. <laughs> I appreciate that he wants to spend more time with me. I'm going to pass this ar around. I'd ask you to sign the uh, uh, Mrs. Whitford's letter in here, and I'm going to return it to them to show that we did discuss this at the school board. Fortunately, I think Mother Nature kind of took care of the snow, snow issue, snow days issue. I know we'll Dr. See. Benson may have some, some options here to present to us at some point. But uh, I really appreciate the students in, in Mrs. Whitford Mrs. Whitford's class, all of them, um, for taking the time. And that little lawyer is going to be very successful someday and persuasive. Excellent. Um, I'm just going to be quick again, just reiterating the Fine Arts Festival. It's just such a great thing. Um, I'd like to say um, what a great performance the Mountain View High School Choir had at the groundbreaking event for the Armed Services Veterans Memorial. Um, from what I heard, for those who attended, there was not a dry eye in the place after their singing. I heard it was just fabulous. Um, again, con well, congratulations to the Colonial Forge Lady Eagles on their state championship win on March 11th. Uh, first girls basketball state championship title has come to Stafford County. That was uh, very exciting. Um, also, I wanted to just thank the incredible staff at Hartwood Elementary when we had those blustery days. Uh, we, power was lost, tree came down, no water. It was not great and I heard everybody got out. It was a great um, team effort and I just really want to thank those, um, the Hartwood team there. Um, moving on, um, regarding growth, um, I'm sorry Ms. Egan isn't here. When she was uh, vice chair, we sent out some emails to our counterparts at that time, uh, the chairman, requesting a growth committee be formed that would have a planning commissioner, members of the school board, possibly fire rescue to start to deal with, with growth and to have some of those roll up your sleeves um, discussions. I have gone to the supervisors three times and spoken on this topic. Um, it is certainly my hope that we can get that going. Um, in light of redistricting, because I have heard things um, at those meetings that have said, you know, just redistrict. Well, redistricting is hard. It's disruptive and it's difficult. Um, some of you may or may not know the new proffer legislation that has come down um, that will apply to certain ones. I don't know the quite dates, but the main thing is in that proffer legislation, it says you can't get proffer money in case, unless there is unless you are like over capacity at a school. Well, that's gonna say that we have to have every school all the time at some very, very high capacity. And, or there are no proffers that will be offered to that, you know, as part of that subdivision. This is a new piece of legislation. That's just how I read it. We have not, I don't believe there's been very many that has come. But capacity and how many students we want in a school, um, I don't, normally call out people I will tell you so just so this is one board member I don't want to see a 3,000 person high school we have a lot going on in our schools we ask that we want to expand programs we want to do things how will we do all this um, we are an amazing school district but I have to tell you if proffer dollars don't com come in because the comment is that school is at 85 percent or 90 or 95 percent what are we ever going to do? We will not be getting those developer funds to build our schools and the, and the tax burden will be solely on the um, taxpayer. I think we need to re-examine that. We have asked, um, I know several board members wrote many letters about that proffer legislation saying it was bad for Stafford County because we're a growing community. So believe me, I do not want to redistrict, but if other laws and other things tie our hands, um, some people may have heard at the work session, when I was new to the board, I met a gentleman um, from Loudoun County, 
and I, I said something to him. We were looking at redistricting, and I'll never forget him saying, I've been on the board 18 years, and I've done it for 17 years. I have redistricted. First, I thought, you're a glutton for punishment, or you love your community that much that you want to make sure it's the right decision. It is not an easy decision. It is not one that we take lightly, but the other part is I don't want to put our board or other boards in the position to have to be doing this every year. We need to f somehow make this process better. At our three-on-three, -three, which, which Ms. Egan talked to, we are looking at shared CIP and shared um, uh, services and charters. That's a great first step. I think we need to move that as well in studying the growth in, in our county. Just my thoughts. Dr. Benson. Thank you, Madam Chair. No comments this Actually, evening. can we have you have one comment? There, um, you all, you and Mr. Horan, um, while you were running late for our meeting, was you did present um, how our forecasting has worked um, in the oh, last several years. Oh, Would you comment on that, please? Certainly. We, we did share with the uh, supervisors in their um, a afternoon session today at 3 o'clock that uh, we've, we've done a pretty good job of projecting uh, enrollment over the, the past three years in the 98, 99 percent. Um, accurate category, which is a great place for us to be. Uh, we changed uh, our methodology in 2013 to include a, a more specific student growth factor based upon the type of, of development and whether that was new development or not. And that I think that has helped us. Uh, if anything, we have we have erred on the the side of, of being a little bit under, and in, in that the actual number of student enrollments in each of the past three years has has outpaced our our um, projection, but not by much. Uh, moving on to uh, consent items. Do I have a motion? Move to approve consent items. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Consent items carry unanimously. Moving on to action items, uh, 10.01. <coughs> Any, um, is there? Madam motion? Chairman, for purposes of discussion, I make a motion to approve. Is there a second for purposes second. of discussion? Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Um, any specific questions or would we like a, a quick briefing on this process? I mean, I know several of us had it yesterday, but. Well, what, what we discussed at the, um, the three on three yesterday is from a practical standpoint, we will be starting this process anew once we come up with an agreement with the county. And what was presented was a very detailed uh, proposed uh, memorandum. Was it an MOU? Memorandum of Understanding? Not yet, but it will be but a that, process that's what, that that's where it's going to. to, agree to. And, and the, what was exciting about it was the, the interaction throughout the entire process between our board and the supervisors. And the, the, the superintendent would be working closely with the county administrator. And I, I, I just really am excited about it because I think it gives us a chance to make our case for what we need, but also it will make us more cognizant and have some empathy for what the supervisors, you know, have to 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 decide, you know, when they're making these decisions because there there is a there is a much broader you know world here in Stafford than you know the schools. I mean, our focus is the schools, and that's what it should be. But when we're dealing with this, the capital improvement plan, you know, and the county, this will give us a chance to work together and 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 on both sides get a much better understanding and and uh, hopefully come up with a plan that's really going to meet the needs and not just a wish list or moving things off or moving them on because the numbers work that way. Madam Chair, if I could just add to that, Ms. Healy, I pre appreciate those comments, but if I could add that uh, the other thing that's really critical to uh, this new process is that we have an uh, agreed upon um, me mechanism methodology for evaluating projects, not just the, the process, which is, 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 I think is a strong part of what is being proposed in that interaction between the two boards, but that we're, we categorize and score projects based upon an agreed upon set of, of rubrics that look at things like health and safety and educational needs and that, that uh, we'll, then we, we kind of have an opportunity to, to rack and stack projects across the county as a whole. Mr. Bukowski. Yeah, uh, I, I won't be supporting uh, this this tonight, and f for a few reasons. Uh, first, first off, it's 
you know, the Ferry Farm project has, of course, been pushed off, and that was the, the next project up right after Montcure. Fifteen of the 17 elementary schools in our division are either new, renovated, uh, or rebuilt. And the two were Hartwood Elementary and Ferry Farm Elementary were the next, and then, of course, Drew. Ferry Farm Elementary, uh, for years, has been being pushed down the CIP to gain, um, you know, to gain efficiencies and to gain money for other projects. Um, we've also, as you saw on the last meeting, two meetings ago, that, you know, we finally, the only school that didn't have the FIOS connection was Ferry Farm because they were holding that $250,000 thing uh, upgrade off until the rebuild as well. But we finally, Dr. Benson finally came, uh, gave some direction to the staff and, and, and he fixed that. Um, but that has been going on with the lighting, with the chillers, with the air conditioning units for years and years and years in Ferry Farm. I fully support the racking and stacking of projects. However, I don't support a CIP, um, you know, the memorandum, of, uh, the memorandum with the evaluation criteria is not, is not complete yet. We as a board haven't said, oh, by the way, constituents of Ferry Farm Elementary School with a 1957, uh, you, you know, uh, the year that Ferry Farm was built, uh, we're putting the high school in your place in instead. So we're not even saying that. We're putting, we're looping all these projects together, uh, and hopefully, uh, at the end of the day, we may be able to build something. Um, I don't see the supervisors doing that same thing. Maybe they are, and I don't know about it. I know that courthouse, that the seventy million dollar courthouse. I, I know that's moving. Maybe it's eighty million. I know that's moving down pretty quickly with without any uh, pushback. So um, you know, that, those are some of the reasons why I can't support that. You know, my kids and the, and the, and the kids at uh, Drew Middle School and the kids at um, Hartwood Middle School, they, you know, we spent a lot of time on this board talking about equity, equity. When, when Stafford High School was built, we had to go ahead and put $8 million into Mountain View and we had to put another million, because we needed equity. We needed, yes, it, did it get a couple of hundred, hundred, couple, of hundred, couple, of hundred couple of hundred more students? Yes. but. You know, so there is an equity issue here that I think the board um, has neglected by, uh, and, and I think there's support to move this forward, probably vast support, but I think there's an equity issue here uh, with, with our elementary schools that we're pushing off to, to this new method methodology of this new CIP racking and stacking. I, you know. I would have thought in a, in a perfect world, the logical thing to do would have been to ke keep Ferry Farm on the docket or keep whatever the next project was on the docket, whether that had been Hartwood, it had just happens to be at Ferry Farm and I'm the one chatting it up, right? But you keep it on the docket and then once you come up with that evaluation criteria and that methodology to, to dis explain to my constituents, then, then we move forward with it. So. I won't be supporting it. Thanks. Madam Chair. Well, here's the good news, Ms. Murkowski. That is what's being done is all the projects that are uh, that were on the CIP are still on the CIP, including the Ferry Farm Elementary rebuild. Uh, actually, elementary number 18 is on there. Uh, high school number six, Hartwood Elementary renovation, Drew Mid Middle School renovation, and the Fleet Services building um, improvements. And what is being done is all those projects because I pushed for this very hard to make sure those projects remained on the CIP acknowledge on the CIP as we go into the new process that is going to prioritize the projects as a as a, a, w w within the whole county and frankly I had a frank conversation with some members of the Board of Supervisors and no the, the courthouse is not set in stone yet there is still a lot of debate on their side about the the need of the courthouse demands, whether it's a new courthouse, uh, the $70, $80 million number that's been discussed, but I believe the number that's, on, that's still on their CIP is somewhere around $30 million, which would be most likely be a renovation of the existing building, some expansion of the existing building where they can build. Um, so that's why I'm supporting this, because this does still retain the projects on the CIP that we are passing and approving, and we are saying that these projects are important to us. We want to keep these projects on, our, on the CIP in some form or fashion as we develop this new um, 
process. CIP process, all these projects are going to be guaranteed to at least have their day in front of the, the board or the deciders and have that rubric de, uh, you know, filled out for them and then prioritized from there. If we were not to do that, and I know there was some discussion about how to do this, rather just clean out the CIP, and uh, that's when these projects would have been lost. That's when Ferry Farm were guaranteed to not be rebuilt, renovated, anything. This, what we're about to pass, hopefully, guarantees that the project will have its day in court to be heard of its and, and prioritized appropriately. Sure. Uh, no, uh, if if I if I if I if I left out that all those projects are indeed on this, I, uh, I'm mistaken. They still are lumped in here. However, you know it's kind of like 15 elementary schools have been renovated, or newer schools, or have been rebuilt, and then on the last two elementary schools, we're coming up with a brand new whiz bang process. To, to make sure that, you know, maybe, just maybe, you'll have your day in court, Ferry Farm and, and Hartwood Elementary. And just maybe, even though everyone's crying about a high school during this time, which, yes, we need, yes, I, I agree, but I haven't seen any work done to, to put it on the CIP, um, I, I just don't think that's fair, and I don't think that's parity. So that, uh, yeah, the two elementary schools not rebuilt have their day in court. Well, you know, that's not parity. But you said they were not on the CIP, and they are on the CIP. Yeah. We need to acknowledge that and make sure that's understood by the public. Cecilia. I, I understand what Mr. McOsker is saying. It has been probably a, a decade since we began this renovation, rebuild, review of the elementary schools. I mean, we went through, um, who was first? It was Falmouth. Falmouth, Falmouth went first, then Stafford L, then Grafton, then we moved over to Moncure. Now, Moncure ended up costing us significantly more money, so that bumped Ferry Farms back e even further. So I appreciate what Mr. McOsker is saying. It's not like he's asking for bells and whistles. He's just asking for the basics that we have in the other schools. So I think this board needs to be prepared with a plan B if in fact we can't do a rebuild because to a certain extent it, it it is out of our hands i mean this is going to be ultimately the board of supervisors is going to determine you know what is funding we can't borrow money without their approval and of course we're going to be justifying these things ferry farms is going to be high on my list but i don't know right now if we need a rebuild i i don't know so what i would like to suggest is that we ask the superintendent at some point, not next week or maybe not even next month, but sometime, you know, within the reasonably foreseeable future, that, that you know, you give us a perspective on ferry farms. You know, if, if we can't rebuild, what sh do we need to do to bring it up to par, you know, with the other schools? Because it's just, it's not fair. Now, ironically, I was here when we talked about a ferry farm rebuild, and I remember many members of the Ferry Farm community that came in and said, we don't want a new school. We don't want a two-story school. We love our school. We love it the way it is. We don't want a bigger school. And the school board said, oh, we're sorry, community, but we're going to have more students down there, so we need to expand your school and make more room for other students. Well, guess what? It's, it's not there. So it may be that we don't need to build a bigger school. I don't know. I don't have the answer. But it needs to be reviewed because this has been on the books for so long that things change. We need to look at it. But I would like to be ready with a plan B if who, whoever is making this decision, the, the evaluators or the panel or whatever, if they say, well, I'm really sorry, you know, you spent, what, 35 plus million on Moncure. If, if Ferry Farms is going to cost that much, it's just not affordable in this budget. Well, what, you know, what can we propose to do something for that community? So I, I think that's important. I don't have the answers, but I do know there must be some things that we can do to help bring them up to a, a level that we have the services and resources available in the other schools. 
Madam Chair, just very quickly, and, and I'll be this will be my last comment because I know everyone's tired. Um, I appreciate that uh, those comments, uh, Miss Healy. I, I guess the other rub was that I, I didn't see one ferry farm um, upgrade, and I, I guess they haven't they haven't put those upgrades together with Mr. Haran to you know the water we need a chiller you know Drew Middle School's getting a chiller you know um, I have I didn't see any of those ferry farm upgrades added into the CIP as currently written as well and you know this is about the four, fifth time on the record that I have said that okay if ferry farm is going to definitely be pushed off please acknowledge you know the students needs at that school of lighting air conditioning heat um, a new chiller for 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 the uh, and, and some sort of upgrades uh, that's comparable with the other schools and that's something that the board can do and does have an effect on so I mean I would just um, for the record I just want that to be known this is like the fourth time I've said that I haven't got any acknowledgement but I mean we have been pushed back on these necessary projects due to our uh, uh, impending rebuild I mean we were going to start this in, F in 18 so this wasn't like a, a 23, right? This was 18, 19. This is not down the road. This is right around the bend. Thanks. Um, I would like to comment on this particular item. Um, as we talk about things, if you go back and you look at CIPs over the years, um, things go in, things go out, all of a sudden, it becomes this fluid process which it needs to be because something breaks down we need to fix it in our schools however I think the fluid part of the process over the last several years has moved out a lot of projects um, and maybe not for the right reasons but that's how that's how it's gone high school six I'm still going to go back and look was supposed to have been built by now and here we are you know it, do, it doesn't happen I was glad that I did attend the meeting last night and heard the briefing regarding this joint CIP. I have spoken about this particular thing um, when I learned about this particular process for a while. I've even been quoted in the paper about it. I think it's a great way to go forward. That being said, it is hard for me to vote for this, but I will be supporting it because of what I heard last night. It is hard for me to bring forward a document where I don't show priorities to the Board of Supervisors of what we think is important. However, we are saying we need to do further analysis to move, to move that forward. I believe that our growth numbers come September are going to be additional talking points on all of these projects. And I think we're going to have to start to think creatively on how to meet the many needs of our school district. Remember, we have 20, over 20, you know, 28,000 kids who are using 30 to 31 buildings. Things break down, things get old. Hartwood Elementary, is, if you do not know, you haven't heard me up here very often, is not even on public water. So if we have a problem and, if, and, the, and the well goes out and the electricity goes out, we may or may not have water. So we have a lot of things that we need to look into I am going to be supportive because I support this process. However, I, you can't reserve on your vote. If this process continues in a way that we hope it goes, I think I will be very supportive of this process going forward. I, I do hope that we do a real analysis, not just us. When we say joint, it has to be done on both sides. We need to have this rubric and we need to agree to it. Until our boards agree to it, I'm a little bit with Mr. McCosker. We haven't agreed to it, so it's a little hard for me to commit. I'm stepping out and saying at least my vote tonight supports the process of the joint CIP going forward. It may not support exactly how the projects are listed here. No offense to those that have put them in there. They are the projects, but we may need other projects. There may be other needs that we haven't even identified. and. So my vote tonight is in support of the process and that we are going to need to change the way we're doing it in order to um, meet the needs of our students going forward. Ms. Healy. Madam Chairman, is there any objection to my request that we have this superintendent look at Ferry Farms to see if there's any you know, upgrades or anything that you know, could be done or sh not could, should be done in the event that we're not going to be able to rebuild it in the foreseeable future because I, it, it really is the end of the line. I mean, this started a long, long time ago. 
Ferry Farms was gracious enough to go last, and unfortunately, they may get, you know, bumped down farther. Um, I just, you know, there may be some things, if we can't okay. do it on the CIP, we can do them from cash capital or whatever. Um, I know that's going to be scarce, but I don't, I don't want those kids in Ferry Farms to be shortchanged because, you know, we, we ran out of, of resources before we got to do their school. In a perfect world, they would have been rebuilt by now. I would also at least want to add, you know my heart what items I would like to get a report on that particular item and our um, failure to have uh, water running at the school. If that is a priority project, it needs to be brought to this board regarding Hartwood. That's something we should raise to the supervisors. We, 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 should, we should bring that up maybe, talk to um, so, Ms. Egan on the three on three, water to Hartwood. So those would be some things um, to bring you think that's going forward. We'll have those reports. Uh, at this time, uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Madam Clerk, do you want to clip poll the board? Connolly. Aye. Yay. Aye. Yay. Yay. Yes. No. All right. Thank you very much, uh, board members. Let's move on to our closed session item. Mr. Hirons, can you read us into closed session? Pursuant to Section 2.2371A of the Code <laughs> of Virginia, I move that the Stafford County School Board convene a closed meeting to discuss personnel matters pursuant to the personnel exemption at Section 2.2371A1 of the Code of Virginia, 1950, as amended. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are in closed session. <laughs>